time for some sosa, samosa, and some nosa. Are you ready? Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 551 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. Yes, my friends, we are talking about Sosa, Mosa, and Nosa with Justin Mall from Pixis Technologies today. Justin and I explore the challenges and benefits of each of these design approaches and the solutions that Pixis Technologies is bringing to the table. So without further ado, please welcome Justin to Fish Fry. Hi, Justin. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about MOSA, SOSA, and NOSA today. But overall, what are the biggest design challenges you're seeing today in these types of systems? Okay, so, you know, first, when I say NOSA, what I mean by that is not a standard architecture. And SOSA is, you know, the sensor open standard architecture. And MOSA is really a design approach modular open standard architecture. So within MOSA, I'm really kind of separating anything that is non-SOSA or not host or face or anything like that. I'm kind of taking that out and talking about other open VPX and could be VME or different type of applications like that. So the common challenges between all of these different types, the first is cooling. There are applications where we need to cool in an air-cooled system, 2,300 watts in a system. In conduction-cooled formats, we often need to cool 100 watts per slot, and you know that number keeps on rising. Another area is backplane performance. The speeds are often, throughout these types of systems, very high, although some of the different types I would say the MOSA has a much more of a mix of those performance levels. And then there's the RF and fiber. Those RF optical cabling, that a lot of applications, they really just want to get as much fiber as they can out to the front panel. So people are doing that in different ways, and we're seeing that in all three from SOSA, MOSA, and NOSA. So let's talk about each of these in a bit more depth. So Justin, when it comes to SOSA designs in particular, what kind of specific challenges are you seeing and what kind of solutions? Okay, well in SOSA specifically, you know, SOSA narrows things down to a finite subset of profiles that you can utilize. So it, it kind of restricts that down and it takes away, you know, some of the voltages. So it's just, you know, primarily 12 volt and some 3.3 aux, you know, other than that is basically 12 volt. So some of the challenges are they're really pushing the cutting edge for open standards as far as backplane speeds. And there's also a lot of fiber and optical cabling in these systems that are through the backplane. So those modules take up space on the backplane where you otherwise would be routing. And if you're trying to route, say, you know, these typical designs are 100 gigabit Ethernet, PCIe Gen 4, across a large system, it's really tough to route across all of those slots. So that's one of the challenges. You know, one of the solutions to that you could do backplane simulation ahead of time. We have some routing techniques that are very efficient, and we've found ways where we can reduce stack ups and get really good eye opening. The eye diagram the size is a really clean signals. Another big challenge is the thermal side. So they have aspirations for, I heard something today i think it was 600 watts of slots or something you know <laughs> like okay okay liquid maybe like okay now we're talking liquid but yeah. these boards are getting hotter and hotter so one thing that 
we've done is in both the ATR rack style, but also the 19 inch rack mount style for mill rugged Sosa aligned system, we have airflow going over the fins. So we have a technique where we have airflow going over there and some flexibility in the sizes. And we'll look at, we'll do thermal simulation and we'll find that optimum approach based on a customer's specific requirements. So every chassis we do, we look at their specific requirements. It's all based on modular open standards and our standard design approaches but we do tailored solutions based on those. Let's also talk about MOSA. So what are the key elements and challenges for these kind of designs? So MOSA, and again, I'm talking about ones where they may need five volts or, you know, applications where SOSA wasn't quite the right fit and people do need different things and is very mission computer type of centric when there are lots of other applications where you know you don't need all that so and that's where we're talking about for samosa um the challenge is sometimes the speeds and the requirements for those speeds can also be very high as well but often might be PCI Gen 3 is perfectly fine. Or Space VPX is another one that I would fall under MOSA. And sometimes the customers will tell us, oh, just space wire type of speeds. And, you know, it's not really high speed. We just want it to meet the speed of 78 standard and, and so on. So some ways we've tackled those challenges first. I'll talk about Space VPX done a development chassis that has dual depth. So a customer can plug in, in a development chassis, a board that is of your typical 160 millimeter depth or a 220 millimeter board. And we also have the slot pitches and different options for the card guides in both air-cooled or conduction-cooled formats. Another way that we're meeting some of the design challenges is just you know, handling all the I.O. So one of the things that we did was develop kind of a mirror image type of effect in the I.O. interface board in ATR. So I.O. interface board will plug into a backplane, you know, typically as a right angle. And that's where that board will have the mil 3 9 type of connectors and those I.O. interfaces. And also you could route the fiber from under the backplane. You could route those out to that front I.O. But sometimes you just run out of space. So what we've done is do dual options where it could either be kind of a mirror image or we've also done them where they are different io on each side so that's one solution there another thing you can do is if you're using five volt that opens up some options for you as far as the power supplies so we've done say a rear pluggable just five volt power supplies available in the market and this is more for a data center type of application not something that was mill rugged and that way it's more cost effective more readily available and chassis management as well so the chassis manager in one of these applications did not need to be a higher end version it did not need to be the latest SOSA compliant. It was just, you know, give me your kind of your base Vita 46.11 chassis manager, and we were able to use that, and that was a cost effective solution. I should also say in, in SOSA, we also have developed a mezzanine based chassis manager that goes beneath the back plane so that it doesn't take up all the slots. And that way, you know, it helps with swap and so on. You're not losing a slot of space. And it is designed as all US-based, 100 US-based software encoding, which is important for SOSA. But we've used that in what I would call the MOSA applications as well. So that's another way to save space, whether it's an ATR or sometimes even in a full 19 inch rack mount they might be using 16 slots at one inch pitch 
So to be able to have that kind of space available with that slot saver is beneficial in many applications. All right. So what about NOSA? What are the key elements we're looking at here? And what kind of challenges are inherent with these designs? So NOSA, again, is uh, not an open standard, just a way to, you know, make it all rhyme. (laughs) And basically, some of the challenges there are they want to often just do something and do it really well. So It's often more of a dedicated device in some instances. In some cases, it's a chassis where even SOSA performance isn't quite there yet. But SOSA, of course, you have to follow the rules, right? So to break those rules, there was one application where we leveraged it with a, I would call it a VPX-like system. And it was also a data center type it didn't need to be rugged in this case and we do have other rugged solutions but anyway this case it wasn't rugged and they had requirements for over 28 gigabod across a backplane that's a full 16 inches so to achieve that the rt3 connector which is a fast it was the fastest connector at the time for open vpx couldn't handle that speed basically goes up to 25 so for you know four lanes of 25 for 100 gigabit ethernet so we use a custom high speed connector for that and that was a way to kind of solve that problem and of course we did backplane simulations my diagrams and s parameters and and so on to really see what really optimized that performance also the cooling was 2300 watts in some cases so in a 9u tall chassis with 6u boards so rack space was important too so we had to keep it 9u so we have a very powerful cooling approach with fans that are directly above the boards they pull the air up from beneath and they blow the heat 90 degrees out the back so you're not blocking any of the io space in the back or anything like that and it's just a very efficient and we're able to cool that 2300 watts in that system with that approach another example in the nosa is when they have very specific needs like i just want to do this one thing really well so in those applications we've utilized ni at this research brand of ni their sdrs and those are really were designed as commercial products lab type of settings and so on and a lot of customers uh, really wanted to be able to use those out in the field sometimes an aircraft you know sometimes people just want to throw it in the back of a truck or a plane from one location to another without you know any damage or something you know to make sure it, it survives that transport so kind of a transport grade so we've done all different types from transport grade ruggization to a just an outdoor weatherproof where it might be pole mount and just survive the weather and so on all the way up to a full mill rugged with three triple nine connectors all right justin so it's time for your off the cuff now i know you recently took a trip to cozumel so tell me more about that what was your favorite part about visiting cozumel uh, my favorite part of cozumel was scuba diving i finally got my certification even though i've gone so many times but always want to do it but that was the perfect place to get certified and it is so amazing what you see in there that i'm really glad i got other experience in other places scuba diving first because otherwise i'd be you sort of ruined for <laughs> for how the experiences. I mean, they would. It, it was just so incredible that I, I can't even describe it. It's it's like the movie Finding Nemo. It really is. Awesome. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. All right. Thank you for having me. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter or X, 
I guess. You can monitor our tweets at eejournaltfm. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal X account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of September 29th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.